so now I'm ready to cut in now all right and because my lines not that far you're not really going to see it uh, as much as you would as if you had installed the paint on your ceiling with a nine inch paint frame and you were two inches off the wall in certain areas oh yeah the, that's fine that you just you just cut that in well the more cut in that you do the more likely you are to see the cut in or putting your paintbrush strokes on there if you don't if you don't put it on as nice and tight as you uh, install your your paint maybe you have to cut in an extra time because your paintbrush is is pulling some off in fact I may have to cut in the ceiling twice because you remember if you were with me when I was installing this paint I used a little six inch mini roller and because I was changing this to a white ceiling instead of the tan ceiling see the the uh, the ceiling was the same color as the as the walls from before okay and if you're changing it out to white then uh, chances are you're gonna have to put two coats if you just put one coat and think oh yeah I can do it and put it up there nice and even it never works trust me I don't care if you use a nine inch roller and a lambskin roller cover or what okay you're still probably going to see remnants and uh, highlights and um, uh, different uh, stop go marks and holidays and stuff like that uh, on your ceiling because you're, you're changing it out to white okay so when I cut this in even if I've used thick paint sometimes painters will use uh, their paint and had and it's kind of thickening up in their paint tray or, or a paint bucket or something uh, they might think oh I can put that on there with just one coat even though I put two coats uh, out with a roller I might be able to get this done with one coat with a paintbrush okay you're not as good as a professional painter and you're not going to know all this okay so if you put on with one coat and it dries and you think you need to put a second coat I would say put a second coat on okay and what am I going to use to put that on I told you uh, I had a cut-in brush and I do I, I use this for this entire condo when I was cutting in all the ceilings and around the, and the baseboards and the, and the door frames and all that kind of stuff I use this right here that's what I use it actually has an angle on it and you can kind of hold it like this instead of having the handle stick way out I'm using that it's a two inch but and and it, and this kind of it's not real th too thick and it kind of tapers a little bit especially when it's wet so it's it's pretty easy to use but you know if you don't have a cut-in brush like this and if you if you're not even sure if you want to do any painting after your first project could you could you use a, a, a cheap old paintbrush like this yeah you could use one like this or uh, where's where's the other one I had I had it oh here it is see this is just a cheap old uh, two inch throwaway paintbrush and I've been using this for our all kinds of stuff and you know it still works could I use that up there and have it look just like a professional painter when I get done yeah because because I did such a good job up there when I installed the uh, uh, the paint with the mini roller I don't I don't have to go very far out from the ceiling do I look at that I mean three quarters of an inch all the way along there and that's because I use my mini roller and if you didn't watch that video you should watch that I show you how to get it on nice and straight like that without hitting the walls or anything look at that how did I do it so so good and now because I decided to put masking tape up there when I put the paint on there it doesn't you know I can be fairly sloppy to a certain extent if I wanted to or I'm still going to do the best I can but do I do I really need a cut in paintbrush up there couldn't I use a throwaway paintbrush I call these throwaway paintbrushes but I don't throw them away after I use them one time see this is a three inch they even have a four inch like that uh, and 
you know, uh, obviously they're not as thick, they're not as nice as something like this. This will hold more paint, but in a bind, could I even do it with this one, even though some of these bristles uh, aren't even straight anymore? Yeah, I could if I wanted. It's going to take me more trips up back and forth because I'm going to use a paint tray and I'm just going to dip here and then go up and do a little bit, come back down, dip again. If I had a little bucket that I wanted to hold, could I do the whole thing with that and have it look perfectly straight? Yeah, I could. Or I could do it, or, or I could do it with that. But I'm not going to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna end up using that. Okay. But I'm just saying you could. You could use something like this, or you know those big, cheap paint brushes, and, and the and the bristles are real fat on it. Could could you get up there, and and um, do it that? You probably could, but you know I wouldn't recommend going with anything more uh, than two and a half inches. This is a this is a two inch cut in paintbrush. I have a, I have a two and a half inch cut in paintbrush, but don't use one of those four inch funky uh, paint brushes that you get with a whole kit. You know, I, I never do that. I, I wouldn't want to do that because even then you, you're going to get it. You're going to get it way over. Plus, even though I have masking tape up there, it's still difficult to get that into corners and stuff like that. So. For, for all those reasons, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use this one here. I may end up I may end up doing a couple different spots with this little one if I want it, just to show you it's possible. Okay, so that's my next step. I've got to get in, mix up my paint, and uh, I was using the semi gloss, and I'm just using I think it I think it came right off the shelf. Uh, without them putting anything more in here. I told them I wanted the whitest uh, paint that they had of which they didn't have to mix anything in it. That way if I had to go back to the store I could. If you ever get something on, off the shelf like that make sure you have them mix it. I don't care if they say it's only been on the, the shelf for three days. You have them shake it and they'll sh run it through their shaker for five minutes or what, however long. That's always a good thing to do that when you're getting paint right off the shelf. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get my, um, my little paint tray ready and we'll be rocking and rolling in a minute. Now I have not mixed up the paint yet, but <laughs> I'm not going to show you that. I was just going to use my little paint tray like this and yesterday I painted the walls so I wouldn't use that one. If I used any at all I would use the white one I did the ceiling with and that's all, that's all dry. I could pour the paint in there but here's here's something else I could use and I might, I might use this. Um, remember I told you I, I've got a little bucket. Let's see I could put paint in there and lots of painters use that and it cracks me up. I've seen a lot of painters, uh, guys who maybe aren't painters who are handymen and, and, they, and they hold it like this and after a while your wrist is going to get sore. Well, it's not designed to be held like that. It's designed to be held like that. See? See there? Look at that. You just, you just put your hand up in there and hold it. It's, it's actually quite easy to do and it's got a little magnet right there and it's designed for you could just you can dip your paint and then when you're when you need to use that hand when stuff you can just go like that see and then that keeps your paintbrush from getting in there and if I were to use that I only put a little paint at the bottom you don't want to put too much because Sometimes it's kind of hard to see as you're poking it in there. You don't want to get your paint too high up on the bristles. Like if I use if I use this brush here, I would not want to put that much paint in you know in here. I would only want to put a layer that's about that thick at the bottom in case I decide to to go all the way down. It's only going to get here. You only on a good paintbrush, you don't want to get your bristles painted all the way up too high then it's then it's harder uh, to clean all your bristles and then after a while 
the this end of your paintbrush up here gets stiff and then pretty soon it gets stiffer and stiffer and pretty soon you've only got a little bit left uh, if you keep your paintbrush uh, for for a few years you know and in fact this is a few years old already but I try to keep it as clean as possible and I keep it in the little container and stuff so you know I could I could I could do that if I want um, or I could I could just use a little thing like this this is this was a to-go container for food Momi had one day and and it was right when I was painting I thought hey I'll just use that and when I was doing baseboard, I could put a little bit of paint in here or if painting a, just a door jam or something, or if she was helping me, I'd, I'd fill this little thing up for her and she could do that, wipe it off. And I, I could do that. I could, I could hold it like this if I want. It's only a little bathroom. I, I wouldn't use this all day long cutting in on a uh, ladder or something because my wrist would get sore. I would use something like this. See, and the last time I used this, I didn't clean it out, but I but I used semi gloss in here, so I can put some more paint in there without cleaning all of this stuff out and stuff. And I could use that, okay? So there's a few options for you. Uh, and look, look at this. I've been this is just an artist brush. If after you get done cutting in and everything, your two coats, and then once you take your masking tape off. If you see a couple little spots where you have to just dip in a little bit and you're not really trained too well to, to use a cut-in brush and, and to do cut-in, you can just use something like that if you wanted. You know, just to touch up a few different spots. And I've, I, and I've done that before using this and it works out really good. Or if you're doing, uh, you know, just one or two little things. I did a little caulking on one little screw hole in a wall and I got all the caulking uh, cleared off all the way around instead of using a big paintbrush and slapping the paint up there I got just a little artist brush and I just did the circle and it blended in way better and if you take a paintbrush and go like that then you can see the flash mark afterwards trust me um, you'll see the flash marks if you look at the paint if you look at the wall on a shiny day, sunny day, look at it at an angle, you'll see exactly where your, where your touch-up is. I don't care if the paint is the same exact color. It just never works. Okay, so next step is getting up there and starting to do the cut-in.